Okay, we're going to run through 3.2 Super Carol. So we have finally gained the ability to turn around and turn right, which is awesome. All right, we are revisiting our Carol Hurdle program. And basically, this is just showing us uh, what we have already done, but we no longer have to define turn right and turn around. And if you slow it down, Carol actually legitimately turns right and legitimately turns around. Um, it is no longer done with left turns. Um, so what this level 3.24 is wanting you to do is go back and find your code from the last time we did the two towers assignment. Um, I kind of skipped over 3.1. So it's not there, so I'm going to have to find it. I think it was in lesson two. So I've got to figure out where. No, that's lesson three. I think it's in lesson two. And you can hover over and it'll tell you what it was. So I'm looking for two towers, pancakes, digging. Two towers, there it is. Okay, so I can click on that. And I'm just going to... Do a control C. I'm going to highlight everything. Do a control C to copy. And now I can navigate back to unit three. And I believe I was, yes, so 3.24. Okay, that's a lot of moving around. I'm going to delete everything that was there and paste everything so that it's, so I got the main, and now I'm just going to delete the turn right, delete the turn around definitions. And now, when Carol needs to turn right, Carol will actually turn right. When Carol needs to turn around, Carol will actually turn around, and we're good to go. Okay, so that uh, gives us our Super Carol badge. Congratulations. Alrighty, we are in Carol 3.3, looking at for loops a little bit more. We'll start with a quiz. What's the best way to get Carol to move 10 times? There's the for loop. Lessons over. That uh, one was easy. Okay, so this is breaking down, um, or I'm going to break down a for loop. So when we say let i equals zero, that means I'm creating a variable called i and I am setting it equal to zero. And I'm going to use some comments here to also just kind of spell that out because I want you to get this. So when I say let i equals zero, it is creating a, what we call a local variable. Um, which means it exists only within this for loop. So if I try to refer to I somewhere outside this for loop, I is not going to be defined. All right, and it's going ahead and giving it an initial value of zero. All right, the next section of a for loop, all right, the middle section is the condition being tested within the loop. As long as the condition is true, you stay in the loop. As soon as that condition evaluates to false, you exit the loop. So what this is saying is each time loop runs through before it runs the code it's going to check and say what's i is i less than nine if it is it's going to move if not we'll exit and then lastly this i plus plus just means each time the loop runs i is going to increase the previous value of i by one all right and then from there we have the actual code that runs within the loop which is just a move in this case all right so one cool thing about code HS that you'll see in a second when we run it is it counts eyes at the bottom of your screen. So before that blue box showed up, it counted up to nine. Okay, this one, again, want us to run it. Um, again, same syntax. Create a variable called i, set it equal to zero. Put your condition, we want it to put six balls. So we're going to set it to six right there. i plus plus increase, put a ball. Then outside of the loop, we want to move, okay? So we don't want to move six times, we want to move once, so that move is outside of the loop. Alrighty, uh, this one is showing the power of a for loop um, by being able to place 100 balls with just a few lines of code. Alright, so got some comments there. Carol needs to move forward first, so we're going to move. And then Carol needs to pick up 100 balls. So to do that, we're going to say let i equals zero, creating a variable called i, setting it equal to zero. And our condition is as long as i is less than 100, take a ball, um, and then we're going to do I++. Plus plus. So Carol needs to move, get on the stack, take all 100 balls, and then move one final time. And you can see the eyes counting at the bottom of your screen. Sorry, my cursor was over that a little bit. And we are good to go. 
Okay, Dizzy Carol. Okay, the directions on this one have Carol spin in place eight times. So what that means is spin all the way around. So that is actually going to be 32 left turns. So the condition we're looking for is 32. So we're going to again for loop, let i equal zero, create a variable named i, set it to zero. We're going to check is i less than 32. If it is, we're going to turn left. And each time we turn left, we're going to add one to i. And you can see the count at the bottom again. That is really simple. That is all there is to a for loop. Just memorize that syntax. Let i equal zero. Plug in your condition, i plus plus. You can do loops with other things. Um, you can, as we look through these directions here, um, it does not always have to be i plus plus. You could change it so that it increases by two or three. Um, we'll get to that later in the course. All right, so where our comments kind of break down what we need to do. Um, so Carol needs to put a ball down that is outside of the loop. And then Carol needs to turn left. So we kind of use comments to structure this one. And then we need to repeat that process three times. Um, so that's the way I set this one up. Um, and because I use multiple loops, if we were combining functions, I could have done this a much better way. But I also wanted to show you this. Because this... Um, because main is in the loop here and this is in main, we could have had conflicting i's. It may not have happened, but just so you know, you don't have to use i. You can use anything for your variable name. I use j in that case, just to avoid having double i's. Um, Alrighty, that wraps up 3.3. .3. Okay, we are in Carol lesson four for unit three, doing a little bit more with four loops. So this particular activity is very similar to what we did last time. We just don't have the movement. So if you remember when we closed out three, three, we put a ball in every corner. So just kind of looking at the code here, we're going to create our loop. We need to move, put a ball, turn left all right, and do it four times. All right, we've got a, another hurdle problem. So we need to have at least one function called jump hurdle as part of our solution. We've seen hurdles before. I'm going to use that same concept. So I do have my comments here. At any point, if you want to pause uh, to get the code, you can. But basically, I'm breaking it down to Carol needs to run to the hurdle. Carol needs to jump the hurdle. Um, and I just break it down to those two functions. It needs to happen five times because there's five hurdles. Plug that in the main function. Uh, and then we're going to repeat that right there. So we're going to run the hurdle and jump hurdle five times. Because we don't move after we jump a hurdle, that last time we should land in the final spot. So we call the main function. All right, and we're good to go. All green check marks. All nice. All righty, going down the slide. This one is buggy. I'm going to have to probably clear out my history because I have done this one before. So give me a moment to do that. Reset my code. Okay, so this is a pretty common issue that we're going to see here. Um, this is a runtime error. Carol crashes into the wall because we have I plus one right there. That should be I plus plus. Um, that is not taking the previous value of I. Um, that is just creating a mess there. I could do I equals I plus one, that is actually what I plus plus is shorthand for. That would work. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just change it to I plus plus to avoid confusing anybody. But that is really what I plus plus means is I equals I plus one. So take the previous value of I, add one to it. All right, we've got a green check mark. We're good to go. All right, we're gonna also fix the bug here in this world. So again, I need to reset my history real quick. All right, so we already have, we have the same problem that we had on the last one. So I need to fix that I plus one. So I'm going to do that again. It's the exact same thing. I'm just going to change that to I plus plus. And then the issue we have down here is they, uh, they use a or equal to. That is going to change the number of times we go. We just want to go four times. Um, zero, one, two, three. If we had it or equal to, it would go a fifth time, causing a crash. All right, just kind of a quick reflection on for loops. 
right, in your own words, describe the purpose of a for loop. So I will type out my thoughts. So it is, let me gather my thoughts here. Sorry about that. But a for loop allows... It took me a minute to get my train of thought there. So, allows a repeated action to happen as many times as desired with limited amount of code. Okay. Think of a website app or machine. This one is always tough. I could think of plenty of programs. Uh, what's popping in my head? Alrighty, um, I'm gonna. All right, if you want to read my, I'm gonna go with the coin counter. Um, so feel free to read through this. If not, um, I will see you in unit four.